Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in South Florida, it's time for South Florida Business Radio. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of South Florida Business Radio, and this is going to be a good one. But before we get started, it's important to recognize our sponsor, Diaz Trade Law, your customs expert. Today on South Florida Business Radio, we have Alon Bender, and he is with Clear Security. Welcome. Great to be here. I am so excited to be talking to you about this. This is so important. But before we get too far into things, tell us about Clear Security. How are you serving, folks? Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it. So uh, with Clear Security, we are early stage startup, and we are helping organizations to deal with the problem of being overwhelmed with the alerts and data. Uh, so if you look at the five, last five years, the volume of security alerts and security operations has doubled. The staff level didn't double in any organization that uh, we are aware, aware of. So really the solution is to automate more and reduce the workload in a security operations center and allow uh, companies to respond quicker and faster to uh, to security threats. Now, for the listeners who aren't kind of in the weeds of this as much as you are, can you share a little bit about cybersecurity and and the kind of maybe the evolution of the bad actors? At one point, you know, there were movies where the bad actors are teenagers in a basement, you know, with Cheetos and Red Bull. But today's bad actor, they they're much more sophisticated. This is a full-time job. This is very organized. Can you, so can you speak to that a little bit to educate the listener about where we're at and what we're dealing yeah, with today? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So yeah, you are absolutely right about that. Uh, today's uh, what we call bad actors are sophisticated. The, it's really a, an underground economy. It's a very large economy, actually. And what you're seeing, the type of threats that you're seeing, especially since COVID, is really going after what we call the human behavior, meaning that you may get a link, so you may hear the term phishing emails, say, hey, your PCR results arrived, click here, it's urgent, and it really takes you to an identity stealing, uh, basically, website. Or here's your Amazon gift card or Apple gift card, whatever the case may be, all the way to more sophisticated attacks where the bad actors are assuming are basically stealing an identity and assuming an identity of a manager and finding the way into an organization, sending a message on behalf of the manager to the people that report to that manager, asking them to do something with a, typically with a sense, sense of uh, urgency. Hey, I need this account number. Sign your CFO. I'm on the road. Please send it to me ASAP. And unfortunately, those type of sophisticated attacks are extremely uh, powerful from the bad actors' perspective. And the main motivation here is really is money. There are some government actors that are looking for sensitive data, but for the most uh, majority of those type of attacks, the the driver, the main driver is basically they're looking to make money, and they are unfortunately uh, making a lot of money. So what's your backstory? How did you get involved in this line of work? Yeah, so I've been uh, working actually in Silicon Valley before I moved to Florida back in 2017. And I've been working with the companies, Fortune 500 companies from all the verticals, from NASA to Nike to Chevron to Bank of America and others. And what I've noticed is that everybody's dealing with the same problem, meaning that those attacks are becoming more sophisticated, they're harder to detect. And if you don't detect those, then you can't really have what is called a response policy in place to go and remediate those as soon as possible. While the different vendors are offering new and shiny tools that will be the best next detection antivirus tools that will uh, block supposedly 100% of threats out there, where the reality is that there's really no solution. There's no tool that will always block 100% of threats. So this basically turned into an operational nightmare where, especially with large organizations, 
they just can't keep up with all, the, all of the data, all of the alerts that are coming in from all of the different security tools, and they still need to be able to basically investigate every single one. Because that's not actually taking place, many of those alerts are left basically as is, and for the most uh, well-known breaches, those alerts actually were buried in the pile of information, and no one knew that that's the alert that they needed to get to uh, right now. So this is really the background of why we uh, founded Clear Security with that in mind and with those experiences, seeing those experiences firsthand working with uh, customers from all verticals. Now, this is one of the biggest challenges for large organizations, especially, is they want to be responsive to their uh, customers. Their customers are expecting kind of almost real-time answers and real-time information and the ability to get into their accounts. The businesses have to keep the accounts secure and they have to make sure it, it's who they say they are or really who they are. It just and the, And they're fighting a, a force that is just really sharing information and, and sharing best practices, it just, it seems like a, an almost overwhelming challenge. Um, how does clear kind of, um, stay in front of this? Because it just seems like there's, there's so many challenges in this regard. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you, you touch a very important point, which is brands, right? So brands are built in the digital economy on trust. If you don't trust your bank, you may uh, think twice before you sign up or uh, open an account with bank A versus bank B. If bank A is getting breached and it's all over the news every other week. So that, that has a real impact. So with clear security, what we identified is that most of the breaches. So if you look at the latest, uh, some of the latest reports from the top analysts in the cybersecurity uh, industry, 82% of threats are actually targeting humans, people. So what we did with Clear Security, we built a technology that allows us to identify how people, how humans are being targeted, and from there, adding that missing visibility to all of those threats so that even if that entire event took place outside of the corporate network, when someone was on their smartphone, walking from home, walking in a hybrid type of environment where the security team don't necessarily have full visibility into the user's activity, by bringing that exposure, we are able to basically add that missing context around how your employees or your people are being targeted and then bring in all of the other signals or security alerts from your existing tools so that you will know which alert you need to respond to right now and fully automate that entire process from there. So now is the is your ideal customer, are they these kind of, uh, are they only enterprise level or does this trickle down to the smaller business as well? Yeah, so it's, it's very interesting. It's a good question because we see interest from MSSP, so uh, managed security service providers that are typically smaller in size. So one of them from the West Coast that we are working with right now, uh, they have about 115 customers. They have very lean, mean uh, uh, level of staff. They don't have lots of employees. It's a fairly uh, thin uh, type of environment. And they need to manage for their customers exactly that, the ability to respond quickly to those type of threats and they don't have the ability to add lots of staff. So what we see is that with clear security, we are like a force multiplier. So by adding that automation, we're able to basically allow the MSSP, the service provider, to provide better services, more services, without necessarily having to increase the size of their team. By doing so, also keeping their cost, cost of a customer, their customer, uh, uh, within their profit margin. Now, let's talk a minute about the South Florida uh, tech community, especially around cybersecurity. Are you able to find the talent you need there in South Florida, or is your team kind of everywhere? Yeah, so we we are all working remotely, but we do have several employees that are based in Florida, in South Florida. So most of our employees are local. Uh, finding talent in cybersecurity is not 
as easy. There is a big gap in the industry. So just a couple of months ago, the White House actually started an initiative trying to address the talent crisis we have in the cybersecurity industry. Right now, there are 714,000 uh, cybersecurity analyst positions that companies and organizations are trying to fill, and that talent is nowhere to be found. So this is a real problem in the entire industry. And we see some of that also here in Florida, in South Florida. And this is also where I'm involved with several initiatives, working with Miami-Dade College, working with NSU, and uh, being member in several associations like HIMSS, ISSA for South Florida and others to basically uh, help build that, that cybersecurity talent and that next generation cybersecurity um, uh, resources that are des- desperately needed here in, Flor- in South Florida. Are you finding that the universities are open to allowing some people from industry to help create this curriculum that will kind of train that next generation of cybersecurity expert um, with the help of industry um, for these jobs that, you know, so that your team and others like you can kind of grow your own employees uh, and at least get them pretty trained up just through the universities? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we've been working with Clear Security. We've been working with the Miami-Dade College, for example, last year and also actually right now on internship programs. So working closely with the Miami-Dade College and others to really uh, uh, perform any number of things from uh, what we call mock interviews, meaning expose the students to what is expected of them in a real cybersecurity workplace type of environment all the way to internship programs, which is we're hiring students, exposing them to cybersecurity. In our case, it's a startup environment. So using lots of uh, innovation, innovative tools, collaboration tools, and other tools that they will uh, most likely see in the in the, in the commercial industry once they uh, go out there. And, uh, and the third pillar here is my personal involvement through the different committees, whether it's NSU or whether it's uh, Miami-Dade College. I'm a member of the advisory center of uh, the America Advisory Committee with the Miami-Dade College. With NSU, I'm also a member in the Cybersecurity uh, Advisory Committee as a member. So that gives us in the private industry an opportunity to influence, communicate, and support the, the students and the next generation Cyber security talent that is coming out of education. Now, having come from uh, Silicon Valley, where there's so much um, innovation and has been around for so long, and there's so much density when it comes to startups, so that when a startup you know doesn't go the way that the founder wanted, there's a place for that founder to land or to mash up with another startup that might be doing something similar. Are you seeing the South Florida um, kind of ecosystem um, kind of taking that same tact where they're trying to increase the number of startups there and as well as giving those founders a place to land when the, the startup doesn't go the way they want? Yeah, absolutely. So the short answer is yes, definitely. Uh, the longer answer is that when I first moved here in 2017, all of my friends from Silicon Valley thought I'm crazy. And uh, two short e- years later, uh, they want to join me. So uh, South Florida is becoming a major tech hub, and it's as real as it gets, not just in cybersecurity, but in innovation in general, from crypto to AI. Uh, uh, just a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Miami-Dade College, for example, they, they launched a brand new AI center, So I definitely see um, a a lot of opportunity in South Florida like never before so that when you have that what we call the repeat of serial entrepreneurs that may have started one project or one initiative, they had to pivot to something else, maybe they were successful more or less, there are plenty of opportunities to participate in the ecosystem and we have the different communities uh, frameworks, clubs, and associations that 
really are part of that a fast growing infrastructure that allows all of the talent to continue and invest from their expertise from their talent feeding back into the ecosystem and basically finding their way through collaboration through maybe exploring new ideas or other ideas through collaboration with the with the the academia and that's definitely a growing trend and it's a very very strong here in South Florida now do you have any advice for other founders in the community like what are some of the lessons learned that um, kind of resonate the most with you yeah I think uh, if I were to be asked this question probably I would say it all starts with people right so that would be probably my number one uh, takeaway for at least for myself uh, you want to surround yourself typically with people that are smarter and more successful than yourself. Uh, uh, and that that opens up lots of opportunity. Uh, what I learned from uh, previous startups that I founded or was part of is that it's really it's all about the people, frankly. It starts and ends with the people, with the team. From there, it's really make sure that you talk to your potential customers before you start to build anything. And when you build, make sure that you're able to prove real value and make that repeatable. So it can be like a one-off thing, but it really has to be a repeatable process. Always negotiate from position of strength. That's based on my prior experiences. Make sure that you are always negotiating, whether it's with investors, whether it's with the employees, whether it's with uh, customers. Always make sure that you have, when I say strength, I mean value. So always make sure that you have enough value to offer and that's really your uh, strength. Stay focused. Focus is key, especially in startup. It's very easy to get distracted, especially, you know, with today's uh, social media, Slack, etc. It's very easy to get distracted, to lose focus. And that applies to also the team that you are part of or if you manage a team, make sure that you stay on track but with that being said, always have enough flexibility to be able to pivot and fine tune and have that as a repeatable process, listening to your customers, listening to the people that you are working with and proving value. Now, um, is there anything in the South Florida tech scene that you wish that they had more of? Uh, I think uh, we have the growing pain of a, a fast growing uh, tech environment. So I would say I would love to see more cybersecurity talent here. I would love to see more cybersecurity startups. There are not too many cybersecurity startups here in South Florida. I would definitely would love to see more. I'm, uh, I believe that uh, I'm, I'm not afraid of competition per se. I think there is enough room for everyone. Cybersecurity as an industry, it's a, it's a huge industry and there's an opportunity for everyone. So I would love to see cybersecurity becoming stronger. And I'm doing at least on my side, uh, with all humility, of course, uh, whatever I can to support the different through associations, through uh, the universities, to support that the trend to attract more cybersecurity talent and grow that cybersecurity tech uh, ecosystem here in South Florida. So what does Clear need more of right now, and how can we help? Do you, are you looking for more talent? Do you need more clients? What, what would you like to have more of? Yeah, so we are just now launching our first release of our product and we have been reaching out to several organizations and design partners that we have been working with. And we definitely would welcome the opportunity to work with any organization that is looking to increase productivity in their security operations center and that would like to learn more about uh, a human signal technology, a unique and innovative way to respond to threats that matter now. Well, if somebody wanted to learn more, have a more substantive conversation with you or somebody on the team, what's the website? What's the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, the best way, our, our website is clearsec, that's C-L-E-E-R-S-E-C dot com. 
And you can also find me on LinkedIn alone. That's A-L-O-N, Bender, B-E-N-D-R. And uh, happy to also help others if anyone is uh, looking for mentorship as far as guidance in cybersecurity here in South Florida. Happy to help whenever I can. As as far as uh, clear security, we'll definitely welcome the opportunity to uh, to uh, add more customers to our platform. Well, Alon, thank you so much for sharing your story. You're doing important work, and we appreciate you. Thank you so much, Lee. Appreciate it. All right, this is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on South Florida Business Radio.